Hello, Monetization Nation. Jim Cathcart is an expert speaker. For example, his TEDx talk, How to Believe in Yourself, is in the top 1% of all TEDx talks with more than 2 million views. Today, Jim and I will discuss his journey to become a wildly successful speaker. Jim will also teach us the ACORN principle, quote, the seed of your future success already lives within you, unquote. How do we nurture that seed so it will grow and develop our potential? Jim is the author of 20 books, including The Acorn Principle and Relationship Selling, which are both international bestsellers. He's delivered more than 3,300 speeches and seminars around the world and was inducted into the Professional Speaker Hall of Fame and the Sales and Marketing Hall of Fame. He's a professor, a university professor, teaching in an executive MBA program, and we feel super blessed to have him join us today. Thank you, Jim, for being here. <laughs> My pleasure, Nathan. So let's start off with, uh, could you share with us something that you are super passionate about? Well, I am super passionate about, man, I, I, there's so many places I could go with that. You know, barbecue and ice cream. About. We know that already. Yeah, that's true. Homemade ice cream, barbecue. Yep. Fitness. I love, I love running mountain trails. I've done that for 18 years in California. And now I live in Austin, Texas, and I've, I've run several of the trails around here. We live near Lake Travis on the outskirt of, uh, outskirts of Austin in the hill country. I love playing guitar and making music. Yeah. I'm a, a part-time professional musician. And um, I, I've been helping people succeed for 44 years now. And I've worked with so many clients, like you mentioned, all over the world, literally all over the world, China, Poland, you know, name it, you know, all, all over creation, Australia. And I love seeing people succeed. You know, when someone, someone says to me, hey, Jim, you really love the applause. That's why you're a speaker. No. No, the applause is just a symptom that it went well. What I love is when a person walks out of one of my speeches or seminars and they go, wow, I'd never thought about it like that before. That makes perfect sense. I can do that. Yeah. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, and then I the want change. them to write me a note a few months later saying, it works. Thank you for that idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most motivating part. When you've taught something and it causes true change that helps someone in their own life, where you've taught them to fish, you've transformed their future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last thing okay. I want is to just yeah. deliver data. You know, people say, yeah. what's the key to good speaking? Audience improvement. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the only reason for giving a speech. Well, I, you know, I'm nervous about giving a speech. Well, stop thinking about you and think about the audience. Start thinking about how your message is going to help them and help them understand it. And yeah. then you won't be nervous about giving your speech. Could you share with us your story of your journey to become a personal development, a human development expert and a relationship sales expert? And I could do that if we have about 35 hours. <laughs> so I'll give you the highlights. Yes. I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, for the international people, that's the central southern part of the United States. My dad was a telephone repairman. Mom was a housewife taking care of us kids, me and my sister, and my grandfather, invalid grandfather in our front bedroom who didn't speak or move from his bed for the last seven years of his life. Wow. So mom had her hands full taking care of him and my grandmother and me and my sister. Well, dad was on the road as a telephone lineman at first and then as a repairman later on. And I grew up expecting that I would be a nice person, that I'd be a good citizen, a good neighbor, you know, a, a responsible individual, that I'd get decent grades in school, period. In other words, there was no real encouragement for me to go for the brass ring or to try to do great things because it just wasn't on the radar. I was expected to have an ordinary but pleasing life. 
and that the statistical average for my gene pool to pass away and get out of the way for other people, right? And it's like music. I was mentioning to you before the show that I play music professionally. I play and sing, play guitar and sing. And um, I, I do that, I've been doing that for many, many years. Um, but I never was encouraged as a child to take up music. You know, we didn't have music in the house except a record player. And we didn't have books in the house where people would sit around and parents would read and encourage the kids to read. Our only encouragement was do your homework, right? Get good grades. So age 20, Three, I was married, had a new baby at home, and I was working in a dead-end kind of a job. I was the assistant to a man that didn't need one at the Little Rock, um, Arkansas Housing Authority, the Urban Renewal Agency, and I was 50 pounds overweight. I weighed 200 pounds. I weigh 150 now, and um, I was smoking two packs a day, never exercised. I had been a C minus D plus student in school, went to college for a couple of years and then dropped out. I had had every kind of job you can imagine, selling life insurance, selling mutual funds, working in a bank as a teller, working as a clerk uh, in the data processing, driving a truck, selling as a kid, selling donuts door to door and throwing a newspaper route, unloading trucks and box cars. Uh, man, I mean, I'd had lots and lots and lots of jobs. So here I was in this clerk job making 525 bucks a month. And I was bored to tears because my boss didn't need me. So I was reading whatever books we had and, and trying to fill my time. And in the next room, there was a radio playing. And it had a little motivational five minute motivational show called Our Changing World. It was Earl Nightingale, the Dean of Personal Motivation. He was on 900 radio stations around the world at the time. And that day in 1972 in Little Rock, Arkansas, I heard him say, if you will spend one extra hour every day studying your chosen field in five years or less, you'll be a leading authority in that field. And I thought, wait a minute. An hour a day, let's say five days a week, 50 weeks a year, five years, that's 1,250 hours. <laughs> wow, yeah. Anybody studying a subject, one subject, not multiple subjects, for 1,250 hours would be very, very knowledgeable on it. Hmm. What do I want to be an expert at? Because I certainly had an hour a day. I had eight hours a day. I was a government clerk. And... Uh, I thought, I don't want to be an expert in urban renewal. And a week or two later, it occurred to me, I want to do what that guy on the radio is doing. I want to be an expert in the field of personal development, applied behavioral science. But I had no experience. And I thought, well, he just told me how to do it an extra hour a day, but I'm starting way behind. So maybe I need two extra hours whenever possible and entire weekends. So I literally, Nathan, I became a fanatic, and I mean in the textbook definition of that word about personal development. That's all I wanted to hear, see, be near, or know about. For five years, I was fanatically dedicated to reading every book I could, listening to audio recordings, you know, which were at first on records and then cassettes, and um, many years later on CDs but this was the early 1970s and I knew nothing about that field, but I wanted to be an expert in that field. So I just kept, you know, going to a seminar, which there weren't many seminars back in those days. I went to a couple of seminars, which cost me like 30 or $40. And that was huge for me to spend that much money on education when it wasn't in a school. And, um, and then I got books like, Think and Grow Rich. This is first edition, 19, I think, 37, first edition. I got How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is one of the early editions. I got Norman Vincent Peale on the Power of Positive Thinking. 
Wow, great book. Later became friends with him. The Magic of Thinking Big, Psycho-Cybernetics. Man's Search for Meaning. Victor Frank. Science of Getting Rich. I'm okay, you're okay. Zig Ziglar, see you at the top, but this came much later and Zig and yeah. I ended up becoming good friends. So that was just the beginning. Plus I bought Earl Nightingale's recordings and fanatically listened to them every day, at least an hour, sometimes two hours a day, listening to his recordings called Lead the Field. And what was happening was my mindset, my worldview was absolutely radically transforming. And as it did, I did better on the job and I got promotions and raises. And then I got elected by my fellow employees as president of our employees association, which they did as a joke because no one had ever done anything with that role. Well, I took it seriously and I ended up getting free parking for everyone and all kinds of other perks. And so they were happy with their choice. But my career just kept advancing and advancing. And then I had the chance to go into the field of training and development as you know, teaching other people's courses. And I did that. And within a few years, I was full-time trainer and speaker. And then I wrote a book with a colleague out in California who was a college professor, Tony Alessandra. And um, he and I decided to form a corporation, Cathcart Alessandra and Associates Incorporated. And I moved to California and we got an office down by the beach in La Jolla, San Diego. And uh, for five years, place. we grew together and grew a worldwide business. And one day I'm sitting at the desk and the phone rings and it's Earl Nightingale, the guy from the radio. And I said, uh, which means, how may I help you? <laughs> and he said, he said, Mr. Cathcart, I just read an article of yours in the nonprofit World Report magazine uh, I think it would make a good audio album. And uh, my company publishes those. I said, oh, believe me, sir, I know. And because uh, in 1974, I started selling his audio albums as part of my training business. And uh, so I told him about that. And he said, well, send me your audio program. And um, if we like it, we'll publish it. And so I sent it to him. It was a, a little four cassette audio program by Tony and me called Relationship Strategies for Dealing with the Differences in People. It was the first ever uh, widely published audio program on personality types. Today, there's millions of them. But back then it was Myers-Briggs, Carl Jung, and me, basically, you know, me and Tony. And so we produced this album and Nightingale said, we'll take it. And in the next two years, 84 and 85, he sold three and a half million dollars worth of those. Wow. And so we went from nobody to world renowned it virtually overnight in that two year period. And that led to speaking engagements in Australia and Africa and, you know, everywhere. So, wow. And then in 1989, as I had progressed on through my career, I had become president of the National Speakers Association and I called Earl Nightingale and I asked him if he would join me on stage at our speakers convention in front of two or 3000 professional speakers and talk about the evolution of the personal development industry. Because this was during the era called the human potential movement. And uh, he said, yeah, I might do that because it was a free engagement. I might do that. Well, a few months later, in I think March, or maybe May, his wife, Diana, called me and said, Jim, Earl passed away. Oh. She said, we've, we've scattered his ashes here at home, so we're not going to have a funeral, but I'd love to have a memorial service at your speaker's convention. I said, oh, we'd be honored. So we did. And she said, I want you to speak. I said, no, 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 I'm not worthy. Seriously. I mean, this is Earl Nightingale, for heaven's sakes. It should be world leaders and, you know, giants of industry. And she said, you don't understand, Jim. You are the product of what he was teaching. That's why you should speak at his memorial service. 
So the only two speakers at Earl Nightingale's memorial service were his widow and me. And a short recording on video wow. from Dennis Waitley. But I mean, to go from being a clerk at the housing authority, knowing nothing about human development or psychology or success, and never having been successful, not even good in school, to being to selling Earl Nightingale's tapes in 1984, and in 19 no 74, 1984, he was selling my recordings, and I never asked him to. He asked me. Yeah. And then in 1989, I was the only outside speaker at his memorial service with his own son in the audience. Holy smokes. So, you know, when I'm teaching today the principles of how to succeed, I've proven that they work. I know they work in my life. I've seen them work in thousands of other lives all around the world and every industry and culture you can imagine. And and I get to hang out with people like you who are influencing people all over creation. I mean, th- that's a pretty good testimony that these ideas work. Well, let's dive into some of those principles. Okay. Tell us, tell us about the, the ACORN principle. The ACORN principle is the seed of your future successes already lives within you. When I wrote the book, The Acorn Principle, and you can look it up on Barnes and Noble or Amazon or you know any of the usual suspects. <clears throat> when I wrote The Acorn Principle in 88 and 89, it was after doing a few years, or excuse me, 98 and 99, uh, after doing a few years of research uh, with a psychological research firm based in Arizona. I owned the psychological research firm with another fellow. And we had a team of researchers at Arizona State University in their psychological testing department doing the the clinical side of the research, the actual technical. I grew up in Tempe. Did you? Be darned. That's where the headquarters of the National Speakers Association is today on Priest Drive, South Priest. Um, the, the, The whole idea of the ACORN principle is an ACORN is the universal symbol of potential. And if you think about what an acorn has as its moving parts or main elements are, it's got three, the stem that connects it to the tree, the cap that holds onto the seed and the seed itself. Well, the stem represents the legacy between you and me and all the people in our line that have ever existed. Their DNA imprint has been passed along the chain to us And we carry it with us, the good, the bad, and the ugly, all of them. That's part of who we are genetically, right? And then we have also the legacy that's been passed along to us through what the cap represents, which is your parents, your teachers, your role models, your heroes, you know, your guides. And they have passed along an imprint. And the seed represents the potential that still lives within you and me. Now, an acorn will never be a racehorse. It'll never be a cedar or a pine. It'll only be an oak tree. But whether it's a wonderful, mighty oak, or whether it's a little scrub oak, or whether it's food for squirrels or fertilizer for the ground depends on what happens with that acorn. Well, unlike an acorn, you and I get to choose what we do with our seed. So the seed that's in you is destined to be exceptionally impressive at something or some multiple things, but not everything. So it might be that you don't have the talent to play basketball like Michael Jordan, or you don't have the talent to to do scientific research like Elon Musk. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but everyone has a unique potential. And every one of us has a gift in that seed that is just waiting for us to give it the opportunity and the attention so that it can grow fully into what it's capable of. So the book is a self-guided tour of you. And it takes you through understanding how you are intelligent because there are multiple types of intellect. It helps you understand your intellectual bandwidth or processing capacity. How much can you handle at once? 
without being overwhelmed. It, it helps you understand your personal velocity, the pace and intensity that's naturally right for you. You know, some people just go 100 miles an hour and they're quite comfortable and relaxed doing so. Other people, 30 miles an hour, that's fine. 45 miles an hour, they're getting anxious, right? So we've all got a natural velocity setting that if we understand our pattern, we can make choices in our life and career that allow us to stay in our zone. And then the values that motivate you, in other words, what's really important to you on the inside of the inside of the inside of whatever it is that appeals to you, why does it appeal to you? And why does that appeal to you? And what does that mean? You know, drill down on your values. And then your personality type, how did that manifest itself? And what does it mean to day-to-day -day living? So that's a pretty complex book, but it's not written in a complex way. It's written for an average person on the street to read the stories, see the examples and go, oh, now it makes sense. So that's the acorn principle. What is your best monetization secret or strategy? Well, first, you've got to make sure it's valuable to the buyer or intended buyer. So make sure that whatever it is you're offering genuinely has provable value to the recipient, even if it's an emotional value, you need testimonials to document and prove that it has that value, okay? Second, find as many ways as possible to show evidence of or validate, give proof that that value is happening. So you need to be able to prove it and document that proof so that skeptics say, oh, yeah, I see, okay? And then next, consider every connection you make with someone is proof that your advertising and marketing efforts worked. In other words, you made it past a sea of strangers, yep. finding a face and a name and actually having a conversation, even if it's just hello, right? That's the beginning of every sale that was ever made in the history of the world, is to see an individual, find out what their name is, and initiate communication, right? That's just yeah, step yeah. one in every sale. Honor that and consider what's the next, what's the best next step. For some people, it's a text, an email. For some, it's a phone call. For some, it's a personal visit. For some, it's, it's asking questions. For some, it's sending something of value, a quote, a quip, a, a link, a video, an article, something like that. For some, it's solving a problem for them as proof well, that's a good that you one. can solve bigger problems. Thank you so much, Jim, for sharing your stories and insights with us today. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, thinking about how we can help our audience will shift our point of view, relieving our nerves, and will likely give a better speech because we're trying to help them. Number two, if we spend one extra hour every day studying our chosen field, we can become a leading authority in that field in five years or less. Number three, we all have the potential inside of us to become something great, like a mighty oak tree. If we effectively nurture our potential, we will grow into something exceptional. To learn more about or connect with Jim, you can connect with him on LinkedIn, you can visit his website at cathcart.com, or you can check out his book, The Acorn Principle. And there's links to each of these sites in the blog post for this episode at monetizationnation.com. Do you want to be a better digital monetizer? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, you can download the free Passion Marketing ebook at passionmarketing.com. Number two, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast. Number three, what is the seed of potential within you that needs to be nurtured? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Number four, do you need help with your digital monetization strategy? Then please visit monetizationpartners.com to schedule a free consultation. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in nurturing the seed of your future success that already lives within you. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, 
please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.